Hey there. Welcome back to another wonderful episode. <sighs> we left off with this time pull the engine. And that's exactly what we do today. We pull the engine. Now, I need to preface this. I've pulled a number of engines before. This is not my first rodeo, but it's the first time I ever pulled one out of this. This is the first time that I've ever really pulled the engine and trans out of this truck. The most I ever really done was a clutch, and to be completely honest, my friend Rob did most of that. Uh, but what I did remember is that that trans cross member is not removable. And that's a big problem, because normally, when you pull an engine and trans out, you kind of want to try and do it in one shot, and it requires you to kind of put everything at an angle like this and then kind of bring it out. Well, with that tr cross member not being able to be removed and the trans sticking over the back of it, basically it makes it so, <laughs> to, even to pull the trans off to do a clutch, all the Tacoma guys will know this, you have to actually unbolt it, kind of twist it back down and then out. And putting it back in is an absolute nightmare. Basically, if you're thinking about doing this on your own, even just pulling this engine or trans, I really recommend doing them separately. So pull the trans first. If you need to pull the engine, then pull the engine afterwards. It can be done. Uh, I did it, but it sucked. And I think it would be a lot easier if you just go ahead and do them separately. I think I need to start off with apologizing. Uh, I took pretty much zero videos throughout this in entire process of removing the engine. Uh, I really thought it was going to be super simple and, uh, you know, just kind of be an hour or two. And I, I don't know, I just really didn't want to set up a time lapse and do all that stuff. It just, it didn't seem necessary. I'm sure there are tons of videos out there of how to remove an engine from a Tacoma. Now that I think about it, maybe I should have watched one of those or two of those before. Anyway, <laughs> It's kind of coming to me now. Uh, it was a much bigger pain in the ass than I had expected. <laughs> yeah. But I can kind of start off with saying uh, the way that the engine sat in there, it's it was fine, right? But I'm really excited to say that after getting the beams in there, that there's even more room. Like, it really, really does feel like that engine just kind of wants to be in there but I'll, I'll get into more of that in a little bit anyway so yeah i i am sorry i didn't take any video during the process i i really really am i i wish i would have i just wasn't in that mindset uh and i got pretty frustrated pretty quickly i want to kind of walk people through the way that i went the the things that i learned essentially removing this engine in trans and uh, to try and save someone else this headache in the future. So uh, first thing I really want to mention is the ECU. <laughs> uh, it's ridiculously easy to get to. So first thing I absolutely love about working on an older Tacoma. <laughs> oh yeah, let me, let me get to my ECU. Let me just undo this bolt, undo one screw. Oh. Hey, look, there it is. Nice. It just, it's two bolts. Like it's a screw and then a bolt uh, right behind the, the glove box. Just, and then you can reach everything. I love it. It's great. I really like working on a basic Tacoma compared to a full luxury car that like my Cressida was. Yeah, so before we jump, actually before we jump into the disassembly stage, uh, I wanted to kind of address some things. So I have had a couple of people ask me, just kind of friends and stuff like that, and their friends, I guess. Well, why are you putting a, a beams in a Tacoma? Well, one, I want to. But when someone asks me why I'm putting a beams inside of a Tacoma, this is exactly what I say. Well, uh, I had a really bad exhaust leak, and I fought it and fought it and fought it until basically I just gave up. And I decided that uh, beam swap was the only answer. There's just no way that I could defeat that exhaust leak any other way. Yeah, but for real, uh, the the main reason that I I, uh, I wanted to do the beam swap, I've said it before, I'll really just kind of 
very, very briefly go over it. I was having some issues with my 2RZ. The engine itself is great. Uh, the transmission, the synchros are gone in a lot of the gears. It still shifts. So if you shift slowly and deliberately in, in the right gears and all that kind of stuff, you absolutely can drive it. I dailyed it for years and years and years. But it was getting tired, and I had wanted to do a beam swap pr probably for the last five years in this truck. It's been my kind of goal. But anyway, let's jump into the actual disassembly part and things that I learned and, uh, and, and whatnot. So originally, I tried to take the engine out similar to how I tried to take other engines out. I tried to leave the most on that I possibly could. So I tried leaving the header on. I tried leaving the uh, intake manifold, like pretty much everything. I wanted to try and take it all out as one unit. Well, after trying to pull it out multiple times, and just, like I said before, the issue with the, the cross member really just makes it so difficult because you just can't drop it down. It, it just, it's stuck on top of that cross member. And the only way to get it off of it is to bring the engine forward and then down like this. And you just can't do that. There is not enough room in the front of it. You, you just can't. So again, please, if you're going to do this, pull the trans first. It's going to suck. You're not going to have a good time but you're gonna have a way worse time the other way. So what I ended up doing in order to get it out, I did pull it all out as one unit, but don't. It was not fun. It probably took me a few hours to, to do it, but I took the uh, I took the top of the intake manifold off because it's a two-piece manifold. I took the top of that off. I took the header off, and then I was able to scrape and bounce my way out of the engine bay um it sucked though afterwards it was an absolute mess in there uh just disgusting i i think maybe my 2rz had an oil leak i who knows but legitimately it was bad i uh, went through pressure wash the whole thing uh thank you to my friend jeremy by the way for letting me borrow his pressure washer there were parts of that engine bay afterwards that i didn't even know had paint on them i thought either i thought they were black or I didn't think they were factory, like, gray. After cleaning it, I think, you know, I think it cleaned up pretty nice, though, you know? It just looks, looks, pretty, looks pretty good in there. Then it was time to go and actually try and plop the beams into the truck for the first time. I, not putting the trans on, anything like that, I just want to roughly mock up the engine and just see if things kind of lined up where they needed to. Because like I said before, I took rough measurements, right? But until you actually try and put the engine in there, you just don't know for sure. You know what? It just, it fits incredibly well. So I lowered it down in there and I was really worried about uh, a lot of different parts, but amazingly it all dropped in and really just kind of sat really where I wanted to be. All I did is put a couple pieces of wood underneath the oil pan, um, not the sump part, but the, the kind of upper part of the oil pan. Uh, that sits over the cross member. So I put a couple pieces of wood under there and it really just, you know, kind of rested on that. It just, it really looks like it wants to be in there. I dare say it might even be easier to work on it than the 2RZ. There just really just seems to be so much room. I'm just super, super excited about that. Um, I knew the engine itself ha would have a smaller footprint, but uh, I didn't realize it would be this drastic. Uh, like the the for the front sump and everything kind of landed on with the 2RZ in there it was almost touching it was very close to touching the front sway bar now uh with the beams in there the furthest part of the oil pan sticking out is probably a good i'm guessing 3 to 4 inches behind that it's behind another it's like a bolt-in cross member like strengthening brace thing and uh it's just I'm amazed it just if it's so so great another thing i was worried about was the oil filter on the side um, because it's very strange on the beams it, it attaches to the oil pan itself um, and it just kind of sticks out from the side i was really worried about that hitting something nope that fits perfectly yes now i don't have to relocate that or do anything so that's awesome very excited about that like even if you look at the intake side there's still plenty of room between the furthest part of the intake and the AC lines. Yes, I do absolutely plan on retaining AC. No, I don't plan on it. I will be retaining AC. That is not an option. 
AC will be retained. Um, yeah, so after that, I was so excited. I threw the factory header on because, yes, the Beams does have a factory header. It's tubular and everything from the factory. Fancy Yamaha stuff. And I'm pretty excited because this is normally a pain point, especially for the 8.6 guys that uh, have done this swap. You can't use the stock manifold. You just can't. Um, everyone has to get one made or buy one that fits. I don't know if there are any companies. I don't own an A6 anymore, so I don't know. That even looks like it might work. It's going to require a little bit of work because you can see one of the merges where it goes from two into one uh, does look like it's going to go straight into the steering shaft. But there's about this much room, so I might be able to snake something around it. I don't know. That's not my worry right now. But the fact that it fits and it may be able to be modified or maybe even work straight up, that's awesome. Very excited about that too. Um, yeah. Oh, another thing. Uh, the engine itself is not currently centered. Uh, like I said, I just kind of dropped it in there. Until I have the trans attached, centering it is going to be kind of tricky. So uh, I think it'll actually even move a little further over to the intake side, uh, which would be the passenger side. Now I'm doing things backwards because I'm sitting in the truck, but you know what I mean. Um, and that'll help me out a lot more on that side. I'm hopeful that I can retain the uh, the stock header. Um, there's even a ton of room behind the head. Like I could stick my entire hand back there and mess with all the lines. I know that's another thing with the 8.6 guys. A lot of them go to the SQ engineering kind of rear block for that because the stock one doesn't fit. Well, stock one has miles of room for me, which is so awesome. I'm saying awesome a lot. I know I don't generally show a lot of emotion, but this is really exciting to me because this is the first time I'm ever doing an engine swap where I'm fairly certain that it's the world's first in a like a, a Tacoma. I've seen it done in Hiluxes, pre-Tacomas, original like yeah, Hilux and Toyota trucks and stuff like that. And I know that there have been in some of this generation of Hilux, but those are right-hand drive. And I don't think anyone's done it in the States. If they have, I wasn't able to find any document documents of it being done. So if somebody else is like, oh, I've done this before you. Cool, that's great. I didn't know. But for me, I there's no write-ups. There's nothing. I'm just figuring it out. And it's super, super satisfying for me. Yeah, like just look at the back or behind the head. And now look at the one on the 2RZ. It's just like there's so much more room with the beams. It's very, very cool. Uh, and if we go down to the sump area, even that just fits perfectly where the front sump in the, with the 2RZ did and the ground clearance. It has ground clearance because this is a lowered truck. If people don't know, I know it's always up on jack stands, so no one can really see that. Um, but it's going to be lower. Like it's, I, my plans are to make this truck even lower than it is. That's long, that's far down the line. I gotta get the beams working and everything first. And yeah, the sump is out of the way, out of harm's way. That's, I mean, I really just can't, I can't say anything more than that. Yeah, I just, I, I can't express how excited having this in the truck right now really makes me feel. Uh, I'm even more excited with how well it fits. Like, it's just, would, would, would you just look at it? So, but yeah, this is, this is just the beginning though. Uh, there's still so much to do. And uh, the next real big question mark is the transmission itself. Uh, because once that goes in, that's really going to change where the engine wants to sit because obviously the tunnel will only go so far each way. Um, so it's really going to dictate all that and uh, it, it may complicate things. Uh, yeah, that's the next part. How's that going to fit? And that's, uh, that's like I said, what I'm going to be tackling next. Uh, after that's sorted, uh, I'll be on to building the mounts. For the engine. Uh, once again, not something I've ever done before. <laughs> I really don't know how to build mounts. Uh, I did some research. I'm basically going to be making something similar to the way excessive manufacturing does it. Yes, yes, I, I did just say excessive manufacturing. But no, I'm not going to go on a rant because their engine mounts are functional and I think they're overbuilt. Those are two things that I think are very important especially for me, because I haven't ever done any structural welding. So this is going to be kind of a first for me 
in that uh, in that aspect. Yeah, so I really want to overbuild them. So just in case my welding may not be absolutely perfect, that the material itself will just be so thick and beefy that uh, it won't cause me too many issues. But yeah, you know, I could lie and say that I'm I'm not nervous uh, about building these mounts. Oh, I'm so ready to do this. It's gonna be so easy. No, like I'm I'm quite nervous. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm gonna make it happen. Uh, if I fail which is entirely possible and fairly likely, I'll make them again and again and again until they're right. This is another part. I'm really not sure that I'm going to be able to keep these updates to twice a month. I know that seems so trivial in comparison to major the major YouTubers and stuff like that, but I'm not a YouTuber. Uh, I'm just trying to document this and I'm still learning all this, including editing and planning all this and I have stuff to do outside of this. This is not my this is not my livelihood. <laughs> but I'm gonna do my best to try and keep this to every other Thursday. We'll kinda see see how that goes. I'm gonna try. <laughs> For real. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to do any of that. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. Absolutely. More than happy to to talk with people. Um yeah, any ideas whatsoever, feel free to throw them my way. Fair warning. I'm very opinionated and I will not hesitate to tell someone that they're being an idiot. So just keep that in mind. But if you bring something to light that's really important, then I'll absolutely be very grateful for that and I'll respond and then thank you. So anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you have a rad day and uh, see you next time. Hot diggity damn.